And welcome in to a hump day edition of the Backstage Pass uh, Post 2021 World Series. And congratulations to uh, the Atlanta Braves for 2021 uh, World Series champions. Of course, a long off season coming up if we even do have a 2022 season. The free agency is uh, going to start here next week. And of course, uh, Major League Baseball will keep spinning the clocks, I guess, until the potential lockout December 2nd. Hopefully they get a uh, CBA done and get ready for a 2022 season. For all you Astro fans, keep your heads up. It's still going to be a competitive team over the next few years. And uh, let's let Carlos Correa walk and let's let's get some pitching. We, we, we definitely know we need uh, some pitching. Back here with my man, Nick Canizales on the show. Nick, uh, tough pill to swallow, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, it is. when it comes to yeah. the Atlanta Braves winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to the Braves, a lot of credit to their pitching staff. They pitch phenomenal. Yeah. And, of course, you know, you look at the batting averages of the main mm-hmm. core of the Astros, and, yeah, they look they look terrible. But, I mean, again, it just it's pitching. Pitching, uh, you know, they, they found the kryptonite and, and uh, came up in some big spots. Astros didn't get uh, the big hits or runners in scoring position like they were supposed to, and Braves did. And, hey, it is what it is. I mean, you know, but uh, hopefully next year the Astros come out swinging and, and here we are back again in 2022, hopefully. It's going to be a lot of fun, too, as well. Of course, football takes up a little bit of our time. We'll hopefully reconnect with Freddie Coleman here in a few weeks. ESPN Radio, uh, Freddie and Fitzsimmons, we always love talking to him and kind of getting his take on the World Series and the MLB offseason. And definitely we're presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, our good friends at Hank Jr. Productions. They document life's moments through videography, podcasting, and photography. Check them out at HankJuniorProductions.com. Uh, pleased to welcome in a show favorite. New album comes out this Friday, Small Town Dreamer, uh, this Friday, November 5th. Of course, Transistor Radio is the latest single out there across all the uh, digital platforms. A good friend, Daryl Mosley, stops by. Daryl, what's going on, man? Hey, Brandon. Good to talk to you, Nick. Good to see you guys. Yeah, brother. Good always good to, to see you. Always uh, calling the Bluegrass King out there. He's done a few albums here and, and come on with us many, many times. Super talented musician is going to play uh, two or three songs coming up today for us uh, throughout the show, so be sure and stay tuned for that, too. And, of course, uh, visit all the uh, socials out there. Well, hey, tell us about this. I mean, uh, Transistor Radio, you know, it's been out there for a while now for you guys since uh, the summer. I believe right around July 9th or 10th, you guys released that and let it go. Uh, talk about kind of, I guess, the the uh, continued success kind of going forward and uh, putting new music out for the fans. Well, you know, it's 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 funny. I, when I put the first album out last year, I didn't really expect to have a follow-up album out so quickly, but I also didn't expect to be off the road as much as I was, you know, last year when they shut everything down. And so that allowed a lot more time to write. <clears throat> and so the album kind of came out of that. And, and uh, you know, Transistor Radio was kind of fun because, you know, I, I grew up in the day before cable. You know, I didn't have cable television. I was grown. But I discovered in the summertime that, especially at night with the Transistor, man, I could pick up baseball. <laughs> and you know, I could listen to the Cardinals games out of St. Louis, Cincinnati. I could get the Braves games a little bit, and so that's what I did. And, and of course, living where I lived, I could also pick up the, you know country music out of WSM, out of the, you know Nashville, <laughs> Red Hot and Blue, and all the, the blues and R and B stuff out of Memphis is on the other side. So, uh, so I had this out this this outlet to the world, and uh, that's what that whole song is about. Daryl, you mentioned about having a lot of time to during COVID. What has this in the past 18 months been for you? Of course, it was a, a huge, um, I mean, almost like you got to push the pause button for a lot of people. But then a lot of people kind of recreated themselves. And like you mentioned, you had you got a, a lot of music written. What was that, uh, what was that all about? And, and how the creative juice to start flowing uh, here the last year and a half? <laughs> well, it's funny. i got a buddy named Rick Lang who lives up in New Hampshire. Rick is a Grammy-nominated songwriter, great writer, and, and he called me right after all this and all the lockdown started. And he says, man, we need to write because we are never going to get this opportunity again. He said, so often we say, man, I wish we could write more. I wish I had more time. He said, brother, the schedule is clear. <laughs> and uh, so we did. So we wrote a lot. And, and you know, I look back on it now that I was trying to make good use of the time because, you know, otherwise the, the, the world was kind of reeling. But that was they gave us something to focus on and, 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 uh, you know, it did, it cleared out some time for us to do that. You know, when y'all look at transistor radio and of course, uh, how, how well that's done, uh, just the album itself, we're talking a little bit before the show, always great to get new music out, uh, to the fans, no matter how long it takes to put, uh, the work into an album, just to share it with, with the great audience out there that you do small town dreamer, kind of give me some of the, uh, your favorite parts and putting this one together. Cause again, this comes out, uh, uh, this Friday, release date, November the 5th. Kind of take me, I guess, behind the scenes a little bit of the 
the making of the album, the recording, the, the writing of the songs, kind of let the audience know about that a little bit. You know, the underlying theme through most of it, it's, it's kind of what I'm, I've kind of become known for is I, I, I write about small town America and those people and their stories and that sort of thing. So lots of story songs on it. And, and once again, I called in my buddy, Danny Roberts, Danny and I worked together way back in the nineties in a band, new tradition. Danny is, uh, the, the leader of the band, the Graskels. And, uh, and so Danny came in and co-produced it with me and, and we brought in, you know, just an incredible array of musicians, Aaron McDerris and Tony Ray and Justin Moses and, you know, a lot of award winners. Uh, Jay Lee Roberts, Jeanette Williams came in, sang harmony. Uh, Chris Latham, who did the engineering, uh, you know, has worked with everybody from Guy Clark on down. And and so it's this, you know, this this really fun group of people to to record with. And, uh, you know, it's one, it's one of those things when it's when you got the right people and the right chemistry, you know, putting it together, uh, that, you know, that's oh, that's the easy part. You know, Daryl, I'm always interested, you know, when you come up with your lyrics, you know, where do you get your inspiration from? You know, it's, I read a lot. And, you know, I mean, everything from, you know, Sinclair Lewis to, you know, to modern stuff. I do a lot of audio books when I travel and and and, and I, I love Southern fiction, Southern Gothic, and I love biographies and that sort of thing. And. And so I, it just, I guess it just comes from, from kind of being tuned in. Um, and like I said, I have a passion for small towns and, and those kinds of experiences. And, and of course relate to that. I'm a small town guy and, and, and all of that just kind of funnels into where the, you know, where the, where the song goes. Love that too. Like I said, I love the album that we talked about uh, last time on the show, which was a fantastic album, especially if you love me, just bluegrass and country and the whole thing. The Secret of Life is out there across all the uh, digital platforms. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it too. Uh, a few years ago, The Secret of Life, the title track, and of course, in a country town. So definitely uh, check that out if you didn't check it out last time we had uh, talked to Daryl here on the show. Well, Daryl, I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. And like I said, Transistor Radio is out there across all the uh, Digital platforms, again, were presented by our good friends over at Hank Jr. Productions and, of course, Bangtail Whiskey. It's all yours, my friend. Great songs and a great sound here coming up. And if for fans that uh, haven't heard you, get ready for a ride. <laughs> all right. I'll sing that one. All right. Here we go. It fit right in my pocket. I took it everywhere. Just place it on the window. The reception's better there. I ran my thumb across it till the station came in clear. Then I'd sing right along to the sounds that I would hear. I couldn't see their faces, but I sure knew the tunes. I'd sing out loud and play a pretend guitar on Mama's broom. It drew me like a lighthouse with its tiny amber glow. The best friend of my childhood, my transistor radio. From the Opry down in Nashville, to the Ozark Jubilee, to the new sounds out of Motown, it all sounded good to me. Well, I sang along with Elvis, and played with Bill Monroe on the stage in my bedroom, my transistor radio. Well, I learned to hear the harmony in church and Sunday school, but I practiced with Aretha when she belted Chain of Fools. And early in the morning, if I tuned it in just right, I could hear that banjo picking, making right with Martha White. Well, it's been so many years since those magic boyhood nights. The day I get my music beaming down from satellite. But it never quite feels like it did in those days long ago when I heard it for the first time on my little radio. From the Opry down in Nashville to the Ozark Jubilee to the new sounds out of Motown, it all sounded good to me. Well, I sang along with Elvis, played with Bill Monroe on the stage in my bedroom at my transistor radio. Yeah, I sang along with Elvis, 
I play the Bill Monroe on the stage in my bedroom, in my transistor radio. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And we're doing that here on the show. Daryl Mosley joining us here on the Backstage Pass, again, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com and, of course, presented by our good friends over at uh, Bangtail Whiskey and Hank Jr. Uh, Productions. Check them out out there for our sponsors. Appreciate all that they do. Yeah, you know, it reminded me, like you said, Daryl, the transistor radio, the current uh, single out there. Um, yeah, it, it, my dad would tell the stories about uh, KMOX and listening to St. Louis Cardinals baseball and turning on the uh, transistor and listening to all the great announcers that uh, definitely have evolved over the last 20, 30 years, 40 years of the game. Vin Scully, uh, just all the great things that you can do with, with a beautiful song like that. So I commend you for uh, putting out a great piece of work and excellent writing. Excellent writing, Daryl. I think that's a great song, no doubt. Well, I appreciate that. You know, that was that was my thing. You know, other than music, baseball was my passion, you know. And, <laughs> and you know, I grew up in a day when you'd get the, the NBC baseball game of the week on Saturday, sometimes Monday night baseball, and that was it on TV till it's postseason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're going to catch a game on a, on a Tuesday or Wednesday in the middle of summer, it's going to be on the radio. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I loved it. You know, I, that's, that, that got me through. Yep. The best way to do no it. No doubt about that. Daryl, I want to ask you this, you know, when you got into the music business, what was the biggest piece of advice you, that uh, gave you about getting in the music industry? You know, um, Miss Loretta Lynn was the one that actually encouraged me to, to focus on songwriting and to learn how to write, which I appreciate. And uh, then there's a great writer in Nashville named Larry Shell who took me under his wing when I was young. He used to let me come to his office and play songs, and he would tell me why – what works and what doesn't. And, you know, and he, he never made a dime off me. He did that strictly out of the goodness of his heart, you know, and I was just young and green and, and, uh, but he was the one that said, you know, write what, you know, you know, you know, figure out, you know, the things that, that are important to you that matter to you and, and draw on those. And so that's what I've done my whole life is just write about, you know, the small town people and, and their world and, and their experiences and some of mine and, and try to find that, that shared experience you know, that, that we all have. You know, back to that Bluegrass album you did, The Secret of Life, I really enjoyed uh, and one of the songs I mentioned there before we hit the break, uh, In a Country Town. Tell me about that one, because I think we talked about it last time on the show, but always good to kind of refresh the memory of, of the audience out there, listeners, viewers, what have you. I love that song. I love what you guys did to really set the tone from a few years ago in, into that uh, being the, the third track on there. I really thought that was some very interesting writing and a very good Bluegrass song. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, uh, if you, as you know, growing, growing up in in rural America, and you know, there's certain things that we do and that we don't do, and and uh, and and some things if you if you come here from you know other places, it might surprise you. You know, things like you know, we still we still pull over if there's a funeral procession coming by, mm -hmm. things like that. It's just you know, yep. and and those things may be foreign to you. Like, why is everybody pulled over? Um, and so I just try to capture some of that in the song. You know, that's that's the world that I live in down here. And those are things that are still important to us. And, uh, you know, so the, that's just what that song was, was just kind of a, a catch all of some of the things that, that I'm familiar with. And, and I'm sure that uh, you guys are too. What did you try to do different from that first album to the second album here? Did you, is there something that different that you tried or, or different style of writing? Is there anything you did different? You know, not really. I mean, I, I just try to, to try to pull of, of all the songs I've written from the, the previous album to the next, try to pull the best songs I can. I don't go into it thinking, well, this is going to be the single or the, these two will be the singles and, and then we can fill it with other stuff. I try to put 12 singles on there and, 
and then let the the song you know whichever because sometimes it comes down to where that's that i'm really proud of that song but i didn't quite capture it in the in the recording the energy is not kind of what i wanted it to be or some songs will surprise you i'm thinking you know i like this song but it's not one of my favorites and then you record it and like oh my goodness it turned out great so sometimes some things you just can't plan ahead of time and so i just try to put the best songs that i can together and and then go from there I know the second single for you is going to be uh, Bringing Simple Back, which is going to come out uh, this Friday, November 5th, as well as the Small Town Dreamer uh, album coming out there. You can check him out on socials and, of course, wherever you download or stream music. Uh, tell me about Bringing Simple Back, because that's one right there that I uh, can't wait to hear. And, of course, uh, we'll, we'll know more Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, an, it's another one of those that's, you know, that talks about you know how easy it is to get caught up in the in the fast lane that we live in and and you know I, I still believe that there's a reason why after 60 plus years or whatever it is now people are still watching the andy griffith show and things like that you know i still believe there's a reason for that and uh uh and i think it's because people still want to plug into that simplicity and so mm -hmm. that's what the whole song is about is just trying to remind ourselves how important it is to to, to stay plugged into that no doubt. Yeah, you, know, Gerald, crazy. you know, we, we Boy, were man. already in November and, uh, you know, we got uh, another month left until the, until we close up the year. What are some of the goals you have for 2022 that you've set for yourself? You know, I just want to keep working. It's nice to be back out on the road again. My schedule's pretty full, uh, you know, all the way. I'm already, you know, obviously full to fill up the rest of this year and working in the next year. I want to keep doing that. Keep trying to write and try to write good songs. You know, I, was writing some this week me and, and and rick wrote again this week and wrote another song that i've already said well i got to record that on the next album that's gonna that's one of those i'm saving back so you know just try to keep just try to keep moving forward the uh it, it's it's fun to do this to be able to to take songs that mean something to me and get a chance to travel and sing them and share them and and so just want to keep doing more of that right, so i do get a hard copy of that album i love it and uh, definitely uh whether you're going to get your hard copy or you're going to get your digital copy out there, it's a very, very good album, Transistor Radio. Uh, bringing Simple back and, of course, Small Town Dreamer, which that's the beauty of doing what we do here. We get copies early in the mail. So thanks to Miss <laughs> Martha right. Moore for that, too, which is great out there. Fantastic album. And if you love country and bluegrass, Daryl's a guy for you. Hey, let's play another one here, and uh, we'll do, I guess, a couple more here on the show coming up today. I'm in a good mood. It's hump day Wednesday, almost the weekend, no doubt. So. All right. <laughs> Well, this was uh, this kind of inspired by a true experience of mine. So, a little wood frame house on a quiet street, the centerpiece of all my childhood memories. I drive that way every now and then to remember where I came from and who I've been. I turn down that old familiar black top I slow down, but I don't stop The little house where I was raised Surely seen its better days And somehow looks much smaller than before But daddy's gone and mama too It's lived in by somebody new Strangers locked behind our old screen door well, I still go back, but I can't go home anymore. I wish I'd known way back then Just how fast time gets here, then it's gone again. One day I'm there with my folks inside. The next I'm just a stranger slowly driving by You might just see shingles, windows, walls and doors Oh, but to me, it's so much more The little house where I was raised Surely seen its better days And somehow looks much smaller than before but daddy's gone and mama too It's lived in by somebody new Strangers locked behind our old screen door Well, I still go back But I can't go home anymore The backyard where we toss the ball To mama said supper's ready, y'all Then we join hands And daddy thank the Lord 
A bedroom where I dared to dream of places I had never seen. A great big world that called me to explore and brought me back full circle to this door. Well, I still go back, but I can't go home anymore. Yes, I still go back, but I can't go home anymore. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And I'm going to have a glass of that tonight. I still have a pretty good size bottle in that pantry. So you make sure you get yours out there. The Easy Liquor app or at bangtail.com and uh, check those guys out. You know, the holiday season's coming up too. And always everybody's getting these gift cards. And I'm like, you know, that's some of the best gifts to give out there. The little cards with, you know, money on them or whatever. And if you're not going to get one for iTunes to get Daryl's music, just go buy you some some uh, Bangtail whiskey. That's the best part. And have you a glass of whatever that you like to to mix with it. And thanks to our good friend over at Henry Herrera and Hank Jr. Productions. They're documenting life's moments through videography, podcasting, and photography. Check them out. Uh, they've done a lot of work with some great country music artists, Kirsty Krause, uh, just to name a few, and just a whole bunch of others out there, too. So be sure to check out HankJrProductions.com. Uh, Back here with Nick, Brandon, uh, post-World Series. And people keep texting me, what are the Astros going to do this offseason? Stay tuned. Uh, coming up this offseason, we're going to have hopefully Mike Stanton drop by and, of course, Freddie Coleman, ESPN Radio. So a lot of things coming up. Uh, stay tuned to the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Uh, we'll put together some some good shows. Nick and I already started working on that, too. So a lot of baseball coverage and, of course, NFL coverage coming up here. Uh, sports music, we do it all. It's a grand slam. Uh, Daryl, love that song, too. And I, I see why this is going to be a great album release for you guys. And uh, you just keep putting out good music. Your sound is, is simple. It's easy. It's, it's, it's forthcoming. And I'm really uh, excited about you know, the next steps for this one. Again, Small Town Dreamer uh, comes out this Friday, November 5th, and uh, Transistor Radio. Uh, bringing simple back and, and just uh, your writing and Nick kind of said it all there. Your writing is just, it, it's, it's flawless. I love what you do with these uh, good old bluegrass and country tunes uh, out there. Hey, before I do a little rapid fire, I got to ask you about um, a little bit of a prediction here. I got, I got to talk a little bit of football with you because we're going to switching gears to that now uh, from what you've seen so far. Now I, I'm an Arizona Cardinal fan. I got to see my team play there a couple of weeks ago in Arizona and watch them kill Houston, which I had no sympathy for the Texans anymore. Nick knows that. Nick's a Cowboy fan. For you, I mean, Braves won the World Series. Who's your favorite to win the Super Bowl coming up in L.A. in 2022? And, that's, you know, it's going to be tough because because health is always the, is always the key, you know. Um, uh, the the Packers-Cardinals still obviously both still look good. Um, there's lots of teams that have great records. You know, the, I'm a big Titans fan down here in Tennessee. Of course, <laughs> Derrick Henry's – to yeah. taking a step back and it looks like that may not be quite as bad as they thought, but, uh, uh, so that's obviously going to change the way they run their offense, uh, in the short run. So, uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an AFC guy more than anything else, but, you know, pulling from my Titans, but, um, I don't know. It's fun to watch this year. It's fun to see the parody and the, and there's a lot of teams that, uh, you know, I've seen, I've seen teams get beat by teams. They should, they should drought and, and, and close games and, and squeaker wins mm -hmm. on teams. They should have, gotten beaten by so i don't know it'd be that's a, it's gonna be hard to pick this year <laughs> i totally agree it's gonna be a good season hey daryl I, I know that you are you know up with music but i want to know what you know what do you like to do outside of music what are what are some of your hobbies you like to do and kind of you know kind of relax and and uh just when you get away from music well, I mean, I don't have a lot of, of hobbies. I'm, you know, follow baseball and football a little bit, play a little golf. But, you know, we, uh, my, my, my downtime has been tied up a lot lately. The, like I said, the little town I live in is Waverly, Tennessee. And on August 21st of this year, we were just decimated by a flood. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, we had 20 people killed, 272 homes completely destroyed. And 
Uh, my mom, my sister both lost their homes in that. And, and, uh, but, uh, so when I'm not on the road, not doing music, I work with the chamber of commerce there in Waverly and trying to help restore some of the, uh, the businesses and, and help some of the people put their lives back together. It's just been, it's been horrific. It really has been. I'll tell you what, what you do outside of the music industry and just a great guy to get to know. And I can't wait. I'm going to shake your hand when I get to Nashville. Like I said, we get up there finally, hopefully in uh, 2022, whether it's CRS or CMA Fest, or we're doing one or both those events. It's going to be fun to uh, just meet you in person and always love having you as, as a guest here on the show. Again, Small Town Dreamers this Friday. And of course, uh, definitely uh, check it out across all the platforms. And of course, the single comes out, Bringing Simple Back. Uh, this week too as well uh, i tell you what, let's play one more we'll come back and do a little more kind of uh, fun stuff on rapid fire and, and uh, that way it's always a fun thing I, I got an interesting rapid fire question i've changed up a few things but this one this one will uh, probably make you laugh no doubt <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> it's all yours <laughs> well all right well in uh, in 1978 there was uh, we had another tragedy in our town that was the biggest one we'd ever had before the one we just had in august and i had already written and recorded a song about it and that's what this one is <laughs> One night in February in 1978, a Louisville and Nashville train a haul in freight, changed the town forever down in rural Tennessee. When 24 cars jumped the tracks in downtown Waverly, emergency officials converged upon the scene. Two tankers filled with propane were among all the debris. They cut off gas and power in that area of town. And trying to keep the tankers cool, they had them watered down. 24th of February, not long after midday. A cleanup crew arrived to get the tankers moved away. The temperature was climbing and the sun rose like a bird. And before the work began, the unthinkable occurred. You could see the smoke and fire from many miles away. The city and her people still wear the scars today. The fires of hell came calling and the devil got his due. And 16 people lost their lives the day the tanker blew. Dozens more good people were injured from the blast. Businesses and houses were turned to smoke and ash. The fire chief and police chief were among the precious lost. And you can't put a price tag on the carnage or the cause. Today in downtown Waverly, a train car stands alone. The names of all the fallen are written on a stone. Forever a reminder of that February day. When a town was changed forever by the passing of a train. You could see the smoke and fire from many miles away. The city and her people still wear the scars today. The fires of hell came calling and the devil got his due. And 16 people lost their lives the day the tanker blew. Sixteen good people lost their lives the day the tanker blew. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. 
And back here with Daryl Mosley on the Backstage Pass. So looking forward to that album coming out this Friday, November the 5th. Can't wait for it, man. I'm telling you, like I said, all the music is out there. And every time you, you put something out, I always end up putting it on my playlist, which is good out there, too. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. <laughs> it's always fun to do because, like, good music for me ends up right there on different playlists. And I put a bluegrass, I put a 90s country, put traditional. I got a little bit of everything. Pop, rock, and just make a whole bunch of them. They're just fun to make sometimes, especially when you have some time. Uh, Small Town Dreamers, this Friday, Transistor Radio is out right now. And the second single is coming out this week, Bringing Simple uh, Back. So definitely I love that too as well. And then back there, yeah, there's Nick Canizales back there. A little technical issue when he's back with yep. us here on, on the <laughs> show. Here. Not a problem there. As we uh, jump into a little rapid fire here and kind of finish up. Hey, I understand too. I found out through the grapevine. Uh, you got a little ceremony coming up this weekend. Your daughter's getting married, correct? She is. Uh, my daughter, Amanda, is getting married. My soon-to-be son-in-law will get married on Saturday, so I get to give her away, and I'm I'm a proud dad. <laughs> well, congratulations to her, and definitely that's something that you should be proud of, too, as well. And I wanted to bring up, too, because I know this is a great song, too, and it's, it's one of the strongest songs in the album. I had to ask you about this, even in the Rapid Fire segment. Uh, Mama's Bible, uh, and definitely, uh, if you'll perform that for us today, if you would do that, I think it's one of the strongest songs on the record too. Tell me about this one, and then we'll have you play a little bit of it because I want people to, to kind of get a feel of it and then you know get into the album and you really understand what this song's all about. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I actually started writing this song in my sleep. I did not know that was a thing, but I woke up in the middle of the night and the first two verses were just right there. And I grabbed my phone, read the words in them in the recorder so I wouldn't forget them, finished the song the next day. And and it's basically, you know, it's funny growing up going to church, I always noticed that the ladies' Bibles were always thicker than the men's Bibles. And 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 I just assumed that this was why. So that's uh that's uh, I don't know where I don't know where the idea initially came from. Mm -hmm. I just I just followed the lead from the from the the words that I had woken up and, and remembered. Well I tell you what if you want to play uh, that for us right now let's do it. Let's do a bonus one here on Hump Day Wednesday. If you want to play that one or a little piece of it, snip it we'll sure. have people uh come out and get the albums this Friday, check him out on all the socials out there too as well. So here we go. Services, oh, wrong key, that's the right key. The services were over, most everyone was gone. Friends with their condolences for a mama who passed on. Partly tired and partly tribute, I sat down in her chair. And on the table right beside it, I found her Bible there. I picked it up and held it just the way I'd seen her do. Then I ran my thumb across it and I flipped the pages through. That's when I started seeing little pieces of her past. She'd place between the pages just to make the moments last. Not too far into Genesis, I found a faded rose. One she'd saved from her bridal flowers, I suppose. Because right there beside it was an old worn black and white of my mama holding roses and my daddy smiling bright. I found an old church program between Judges and Ruth. From the Sunday I got baptized back in my days of youth. And over in Hosea, I found a lock of hair. Not sure who it belonged to or why she kept it there. I noticed there in Proverbs, a page was torn and dry. I knew that it was from the tears my sweet mama cried. They fell on the verse about training up a child as he should go. I knew that she'd been praying because she loved us so. I found a family picture taken on a Christmas day. The last one we had together before Daddy passed away. But she placed his obituary by the third chapter of John. And I knew how much she'd missed him in the days since he'd been gone. All through the book I found them, little treasures tucked away. Milestones on the road of life and memories that she saved. 
Trinkets of no value except to a mother and a wife whose family and savior were the center of her life. I closed it and returned it to that table by the chair. I sat for a moment longer and I said a silent prayer. I thank God for such a mama and the memories that I hold. More precious now than rubies, more valuable than gold. More precious now than rubies, more valuable than gold. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-hosts Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And back here on the show, Daryl Mosley joining us here on the Backstage Pass, again, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com, and of course, presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey and Hank Jr. Uh, Productions, of course, documenting life's memories through videography, podcasting, and photography. Do fantastic work. Uh, great business out of Florida. Appreciate Henry Herrera. And of course, Brandon Bing for all they do for the show. Uh, Nick Canazales having some little connection issues. There he's back with me too. I see him back on the bottom there. I know that phone's giving you some issues, brother, but we're still <laughs> making it work here on, on the show today. Can't hear you. I guess I turn that mic on so I hear you. Oh, there, there we those. go. There, there we go. Internet connection coming over here. <laughs> back here with the great Daryl Mosley. Uh, and of course, uh, Small Town Dreamer comes out this Friday. And the second single, Bring In Simple Back. So a lot of good things coming up in his camp. And I tell you, Daryl, this is kind of fun here before I finish out Rapid Fire today. And a great great song, Mama's Bible, you played for us there. Great vocals and great uh, instrumentation. Uh, you love baseball, so this just came down uh, just right across the wires. Things heat up for the offseason. Uh, Buster Posey, longtime catcher for the San Francisco Giants, has announced his retirement after 12 MLB seasons. So Buster Posey calling it quits and hanging up the spikes. So definitely uh, catchers have a shorter career and – I always say that's one of the toughest positions to play in, in baseball, no doubt. But uh, I won't be seeing him in Scottsdale when I go to spring training again. <laughs> in March, yeah. uh, like I said, the Giants will have to go a new direction now for uh, catching services out there. Congrats to Buster. Uh, reports are he's going to retire and hang it up after 12 uh, MLB seasons. And one day, like Daryl, I remember you telling me, we'll all retire from something at some point. Uh, one day when it's time to walk away. <laughs> so definitely. I guess that surprises me, though, because I mean, <laughs> it does. <laughs> I mean, I realize, yeah, catchers take it take it harder, but you know, twelve seasons seemed like he'd mm -hmm. been there longer, you know. Kind of did. I know, I know he set up the, the yeah. He was champion. Yeah, and that's yeah. I call a dynasty for uh, 10, 12, and fourteen was was right there with him, and I think that's something where uh, Houston you can't put in that category quite yet. You've been there three times in five years, and only one title to show for it, which is still for most people an asterisk to beside it. But that's beside the point. But I still that's championships, championship. But uh, Buster had a good run there, no doubt. Hey, let me ask you this one to finish out rapid fire. We'll do a couple more. Uh, let's let's say this: if you were on any game show out there, and a lot of people have said they just love this Family Feud answer, but if Daryl Mosley is a contestant on any game show, what would you pick? Oh man, Jeopardy! <laughs> I can see that right there. <laughs> I mean, I, I would lose, of course, but <laughs> but but I, I do pretty well when I play at home. You know, they always have the categories. I know, you know, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that that looks like that'd be fun. It's got like right, Nick and I. Go ahead, go ahead. I was saying Thanksgiving is is around the corner here. Uh, what's your favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving here? Uh, you know, y'all gonna laugh at this, but. But a, a staple at my mom's house uh, on Thanksgiving is what she calls ketchup spaghetti. I know it sounds disgusting, but it's just mm -hmm. spaghetti noodles, hamburger meat, and ketchup mixed together. And I grew up on it. My kids grew up on it. We can't have a holiday meal without ketchup spaghetti. So. <laughs> I, I want a taste of that. It's a concoction of something that's like that, that my wife says sometimes, a daddy o surprise on there, too, which is hey, what's that? It's obviously easy to make. So, yeah, try that. <laughs> yeah. Let, me know. let me know how that works for you. I sure will, no doubt, too. Um, let, me, let me ask you about this. With Christmas around the corner, the holiday season, we're going to have some some great guys and, and gals stop by here on the show to talk about some great holiday music. Any plans for a Daryl Mosley Christmas song, Christmas album in the future? You know, I, I have talked for years about doing a Christmas album, and it's just one of those things that we just keep putting on the back burner, I guess, because it's, you know, there's a limited limited time to, to do it. But, uh, 
Um, but yeah, I think eventually I'm just going to have to just, I have so many people that have asked and, and I'm such a Christmas nut. It would be a good fit. So right, you and me both. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Speaking of Christmas staying with that thing, what does Daryl Mosley want most for Christmas? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really blessed to, you know, I, I won't, you know, like everybody else want the world to get back to normal and, you know, I want to uh, health and happiness for, for everybody. And, and, you know, I would just love to see, uh, the stress level that we're all been feeling for the past couple of years to ease down a little bit. And that, to me, that's, that's the gift we all need. I'll tell you Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Keep the live shows Amen. going. So Nick and I can go to concerts and watch Daryl play and get to Nashville at some yeah. point and do this show and just enjoy uh, the times we have. Well, I tell you, Daryl, it comes out this week on Friday, small town dreamer. And of course, uh, Transistor Radio and Bringing Simple Back is, is coming out this week, uh, too, as well. Transistor Radio has been out for a while. But uh, the whole album comes out. Go get you a copy. And, uh, yeah, if you need to, need to contact us for anything out there, wherever you download your stream, you can find it, put his name in, support the artist out there. Uh, Daryl, always appreciate the time here on the show and looking forward to reconnecting sometime in uh, 22 when the uh, new music comes out. And you guys are already working hard on that. Always appreciate you uh, dropping us a vine, and we appreciate the time here on the show, man. Well, it's always a joy to see you guys. Appreciate what you do. So uh, just thanks for making time for me. Appreciate it a lot. You got it, man. And thanks to Hank Jr. Yeah. Productions and, of course, uh, Bangtail Whiskey tomorrow. Uh, Lisa Coon's going to drop by another fantastic young artist out there doing her thing. And, of course, next week uh, we'll have another great uh, slew of shows out there here on the Backstage uh, Pass. We'll talk to you guys. Have a great week. Enjoy some NFL football uh, this weekend, of course, uh, Cardinals and the 49ers and, of course, Cowboys, Broncos. And may your team have a uh, Great success coming up this uh, this year for the 2021 NFL uh, season. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves, and we'll be touching base with uh, some sports shows hopefully in a couple of weeks. So Freddie Coleman, ESPN Radio, drop by. And, of course, I know Nick's got a lot of great guests lined up too as well. So be uh, staying on the uh, lookout for that. We'll talk to you guys soon here from the Backstage Pass. Have a, a great night.